Welcome to the Genealogy Radio Show, the radio show that's keeping you in the loop. This week's show we air from Radio Corkabashkin, which is dedicated to educational disadvantage and community initiatives, and that's based in Kilkee, County Clare. Now today's show is all about Tipperary studies, preserving and promoting the past. And you'll be pleased to know listeners for overseas in Canada, US, Australia, New Zealand, because we have listenership all over the world now, that Tipperary Studies, a lot of these sources are available online. We're going to be looking at the Digital Archive, Collections, Genealogy, the Historical Society, Lectures, News and Events, all the tabs that are in the tipperarystudies.ie website. Now, what is Tipperary Studies? It's dedicated to documenting and preserving the county's rich cultural, social, economic and sporting histories and offers an open, friendly and easy access to the library's collections to visitors both in person and through correspondence. So that's important because it might well be worth dropping a letter to Tipperary Studies to make sure that you're able to access some of the wonderful information that it has. The library collects, maintains and preserves documents of local interest under secure conditions and makes them available in a number of different ways to the viewing public who have an interest in exploring County Tipperary's past. County Tipperary's past is vast because it's a very big county and it has a fascinating history. It promotes its collections and it's achieved through cooperation with libraries, schools, historical societies, government departments, third level institutions and excellent local historians. The staff is dedicated to assisting the researchers with their queries and presenting the user with information from the library's genealogical, cultural and sporting collections in a wide range of formats. So Tipperary Studies collections are ever expanding and the library would greatly welcome contributions of county Tipperary related sources to ensure that the history of every facet of Tipperary life, both ancient and modern, can be held in trust for future generations. So maybe our listeners from overseas can take note of that because you may have very important letters that come from your people who came from Tipperary. You could have a branch that come from County Tipperary and please realise how valuable they are in a social history context. Now you can go and visit it. It's um, in the first floor of the Source Library and the Art Centre above Thurless Branch Library on Cathedral Street. So if you're coming for a visit because you may be coming to Ireland to visit your roots, It's equipped with four microfilm readers and two public PCs, along with ample study and reading spaces. The library has been designed to ensure that sources of large uh, maps and so on can be viewed with great convenience and comfort. The vast majority of the library's newspaper collection is available on microfilm, which offers the user, user a printing facility. So all these are very, very important. And the Tipperary Studies Digitisation Project. This is aiming to make online a range of sources, both historical and genealogical, which are part of the fabric which makes up the history of Tipperary. Many of these documents are unique to Tipperary Studies, and one of the aims of the project is to make sure these sources are available to everyone, free of charge, whether you reside within the county of Tipperary or in any part of Ireland, or to the reaches of the wider world. And that's the aims of the Genealogy Radio Show as well. So please do forward on our shows to those overseas and make sure they know about them, because it's wonderful for them to be able to touch base with genealogical lessons and advice and interviews and a range of things that make up all the clues to the past. So... You can contribute to the project and they'd scan your document and return it to you at the earliest convenience. But you can also use apps such as Tiny App and you can scan the document yourself and maybe make arrangements to send these on. That could be an answer too for digitisation. I have used that app 
to great success with digitization and it's worked out very well. So the collections, well, you have County Tipperary in 1916, newspapers, poor law unions, journals, maps, photographs, school, schools folklore collection, sport. And I was at a talk with the Cork Genealogical Society at their conference and a wonderful talk on the schools folklore collection. It is very wide in scope and freely available online. We have County Tipperary in 1916, and that's a history in 40 documents. So well worth taking a look. You just click on it and it will open for you into a PDF viewer. And these 40 documents take place in over 20 pages and you can download them also. It's done by Dennis G. Marnon and Mary Guinan Darmody part of the funding Tipperary series of publication, Tipperary Studies, and the County Council Service. It looked at the actors and the bystanders, so it has a wonderful count from January to April before the Rising. It's got pictures, it's got letters. These documents are really important for context and so on, and very useful indeed on how we view the past. And with the, you know, prior to our release of the 1926 census, which we're anxious to, you know, there's a petition going around and if you could sign it, it would be great because we really, really need to be able to get that released earlier rather than later and digitize it as soon as possible as well, because it's such a fabulous resource and helps us connect the past. So there's wonderful accounts of Father Michael Maher. Boher Lahan native, who was secretary to the Archbishop Party in 1916, and he kept a diary. And they were desperate for news about what was happening in Dublin in 1916. And these accounts give you all these types of sources, which are extremely valuable indeed. So although the 1916 centenary is over, it doesn't mean that it isn't hugely valuable to find out why you're people may have emigrated because some of them did emigrate around this time because they probably had taken part in political activities and knew that they were going to be interned. So I do find that a lot of people went, they stayed quiet about what the, their roles had been and you found people found out when they were dead what roles they had taken in this time. So the collections like this if you click on the newspapers, the newspapers, it'll tell you what they are. They're a core resource in Tipperary Studies and they have as complete a holding as possible. All of the Tipperary titles that have been microfilmed to date by both the National Library of Ireland and the British Library have been acquired. There are also bound volumes of certain titles available where the town of origin is not obvious. It's been printed in italics after the title. Even the list here is really important. So you have the Cashel Gazette and that's available 1864 to 1866, 1868 to 1887, 1889 to 1893, the Cashel Sentinel, the Clonmel Advertiser, the Clonmel Chronicle. The Clonmel Gazette going back to 1788 to 1795. The Clonmel Herald, County Tipperary Independent. The Limerick Tipperary and Waterford Examiner. The Midland Tribune, the Munster Tribune, the Nationalists, the Nina Guardian, the Nina News, Tipperary and Clare Independent. The Tipperary Advocate, the Tipperary Champion, so on. So all these are very good clues as to what the titles are and so on and it gives a really good account of of what's going on and you can find an awful lot of information in the newspapers we will be covering a show about what you can how to use newspapers and so on and they're very useful indeed photographs now photographs can tell you an awful lot they can tell you um, a scene you can match your house 
the house that you got in your photograph to things that are going along. And Tipperary Studies has a large collection of commercially produced postcards from well-known studios such as the Lawrence and Valentine's collection, as well as scenes produced by local businesses such as the Carey in Clonmel, Cleary in Carrickonshore and Carrigan in Tipperary Town. Between the years 1950 and 1970, the University of Cambridge undertook an aerial survey of Ireland. Who knew? That's news to me, so that's fantastic. And the images relative to Tipperary are also housed in Tipperary studies. So along with a number of collections donated by Thurless Camera Club. So that type of source from the University of Cambridge with an aerial survey is well worth looking at for other counties as well. It would greatly welcome the temporary donation of images of historical nature to add to their further collections and they don't wish to assume ownership of the pictures, rather the opportunity to scan them and add them to their digital archive. And I'll get on to Tipperary people and places and ask them what type of quality they need and actually put that out as well because images really, really do tell a story in itself a picture paints a thousand words and that's not any lie at all so when you click on the genealogy tab you see that they've got a good explanation of the 1901 and 1911 census i'm not quite sure why they have griffith's valuation ending in 1853 but perhaps it was complete for tipperary for 1853 Um, It does go on to 1864. So again, I'll drop in a query about that and that they put in a link on the National Archives. They have asked about Ireland. So they have a nice source page of what's happening. They have the Cashel and Emily Dias's religious census 1766. So again, I've seen certain of these diocese religious census online and they that was carried out by the church of ireland clergymen and it took account of the numbers of both catholic and protestants in each parishes in the diocese to varying degrees of thoroughness while some parishes recorded simply the number present in each area others had names the heads of each household and the census was taken throughout the county though the results for only four dioceses, Cork and Ross, Waterford, Armagh, Cashel and Emily survive. Tipperary Studies holds paper copies of the originals from the National Archives. The Hearth Money Rolls. So Tipperary's families being the Hearth Money Records for 1665 to 167, published by Thomas Lafan in 1911. I think maybe there may be a record of this online. I think I've come across it. So again, I'll put a source together for that. The Civil Survey, 1654 to 1656 and the Book of Distribution, 1680. So shortly after the Cromwellian conquest, this survey was carried out to determine the extent of existing ownership of Irish land. The Tipperary records to such well-known families as the Langleys, the Bowens, the Sadler, Massey, Maud and Waller records can be consulted in hard copy but again maybe they'll be planning on digitizing and there is a digitized gravestone inscription so they have a li- several list of gravestone inscriptions for burial throughout the county and best served parts being the baronies of Owney and Ara, Upper and Lower Ormond. These were surveyed in the 1980s by the Ormond Historical Society and number 40 civil parishes. List of gravestones and burials appear in a number of local publications and journals. So sometimes it's where you look and not taking not taking it on board that these things don't exist. They're appearing all the time because of digitization and so on. Now, when we go to the digital archive, we see some wonderful Tipperary GAA yearbooks. Tipperary GAA Senior Hurling County Final Match Programmes. Tipperary GAA Senior Football County Final Match Programmes. The Murphy Ballinamona Cashel Negative Collection 1898 to 1932. Historical Postcard Collection. Rate Books. Workhouse Registers. Encumbered Estates estate rentals, autograph books, school registers, 
Ardmail National School Examination Roll, Gravestone Inscriptions, Tom Burnell's Tipperary War Graves Database, Irish Tourist Association Reports from 1942 to 1945. So I'm just going to click into the historical postcard collection and it opens into four tabs with the most wonderful images opening up and uh, they have galleries as well. So they have gallery one, two, three and four. I see a beautiful castle in gallery three and just to see how they're tagged and so on, because sometimes it's really important to see just exactly what we're looking at and so on. So we see Monsea Dromineer Castle and this is really, really helpful indeed because you see a view that's in, uh, in Loch and Loch Derg in Nina. So you see a beautiful postcard of that and you can move on. So you've got four out of 60 in this gallery and you can just click the moving on tab if you like to see what's going on next. You have Loch Derg and the castle in Nina again. Beautiful shots here. Abbey ruins in Nina. Castle and boathouse Loch Derg. Castle Street Nina. Courthouse and town hall Nina. Not sure of the date. Courthouse and town square Nina. Again, not sure of the date. So, might ask it just a little bit about that, just to find out if they know the dates. The ruins of the Franciscan Friary in Nina. Beautiful again, beautiful views. The castle entrance in Nina. Lovely picture of it. The old church in Nina. Peter Church and Courthouse Nina. So we'll, we'll definitely be referring to these because we're going to be doing some classes from the 14th to the 18th in Nina. The train station. Beautiful one of St. Mary's of the Rosary Nina of the inside of the church. Absolutely gorgeous inside there. Very, very beautiful interior shots again so the galleries are really really interesting because they start telling you what's going on here and how to use it and so on so wonderful wonderful views of that now if i was to look at the workhouse registers that could be very important indeed i'd like to see what's available online there and I have the Thurless Workhouse Register Index, 1849 to 1850. The Thur Thurless Workhouse Register, 1849 to 1850. The Thurless Workhouse Register Index, 1866 to 1872. The Thurless Workhouse Register for 1866. It's absolutely fantastic to see that type of register available. The one for Ross Gray, the Outdoor Relief a register 1899 to 1917 these are gifts to be going through because people came from far and wide i know they could only go into their own parish but um they they tended to go to relatives in bits and pieces because they had to had to know and unfortunately the deaths in cashel workhouse 1848 1849 to 1850 so that would be persons admitted into and discharged from the workhouse from the various unions and the unions are large in size in some cases so this is a very very useful source indeed and although you find it in the digital archive it's a very strong genealogical source indeed school registers now, wonderful to see those because they really tell you what's going on and who's at school and they can pinpoint where your ancestors were. So they have Boris of Farney School Register 1864 to 1920, Boris of Farney School Register for Girls 1863, Gorta Gary Roll Book 1899 to 1902. So if you click into the tab sometimes it helps if they tell you where to click so again i might just make a little recommendation there without being 
critical. It's just to, that you, you may not be aware that you click underneath. And that's 1864 to 19. So please note, people entering a school after 1920 are not included in this view because, of course, it's against data protection. And this was published by Alexander Tom in Abbey Street in 1872. And this was the Boris of Farney Boys National School. You have a roll number, a parish, a county. So it's the parish of Annamede. And the roll really shows such wonderful. They have a register name. They have the pupils' names. Um, and they show you a very important thing here. Here they have the surnames and the first name. But they show you that you've got the variant of Carty, but you've also got the name Carthy, but you're not looking at Mac MC in front of it. So that's in 1872. So it tells you, if you're from that area, what the surname variant was for your family. Were they using the Mac? Do they adopt that later on? You have the Carols, the Cantwells. The names alone are wonderful. Conway, uh, Coonan, Cleary, Castells. And you, you'll be able to see those who are putting their names in Irish. Canovman, Cork, and so on. So, Cialic. Some people are, are signing their names in Irish and some people in English. The Fogarty. The Farrells, Fergal, so on. And they're all in alphabetical order. So this is absolutely wonderful because you get a collection of names that belong in Tipperary. You have the Gleasons, the Hegartys, the Hassets. You have the Howards, so on. And anything like that is going to give you such a clue to the past. So, listeners, please do go on to the Tipperary Studies website. Realise that the digital archive will contain just as much genealogical information that's of massive use to you and that you can touch into this from all over the world. And I'll contact them as to whether how they will accept scans and bits and pieces and maybe we can get more information and contributions from our listeners overseas. Thank you for listeners listening and just a few announcements. We've got a few events coming up. We'll be Merriman Research will be at back to uh, over 50s in Limerick on the first and or the the first and second of, of of May. That's the Tuesday and the Wednesday in Southcourt in Limerick. So if you're there, I have tickets, and if you want those tickets, please do contact me. I'll be writing on the same.